Australia is taking on one of the most ambitious infrastructure projects ever, a $15 billion highway designed to finally end Adelaide's decades-long traffic gridlock. For decades, the city has been choking on traffic, with South Road turning daily commutes into hours of frustration. Now, engineers are planning to take traffic underground through a massive tunnel system unlike anything previously attempted in the country. It's an enormous gamble with huge technical, financial, and environmental stakes. The big question is, will it work? And how will engineers build a six-lane superhighway beneath an active city? In this video, we will break down how this groundbreaking project came to be, the challenges it faces, and what it could mean for the future of transportation in Australia. Adelaide has a problem that's been festering since the 1960s. South Road, the main artery connecting the northern and southern parts of the city, has become a 78-kilometer crawl through urban hell. Every single day, more than 120,000 vehicles squeeze through this corridor. We're talking about families trying to get to work, massive freight trucks hauling goods from Port Adelaide, and delivery vehicles keeping the city alive, all of them grinding to a halt at 21 different sets of traffic lights over just 10 kilometers. The economic damage is brutal. Studies show that by 2031, if nothing changes, Adelaide will hemorrhage $230 million annually just from lost productivity and wasted time. That's money evaporating into thin air while people sit idling at red lights. The environmental cost matches the economic one, with thousands of tons of unnecessary carbon emissions pumping into the atmosphere from vehicles stuck in stop-start traffic. City planners have known about this disaster for over 60 years. They've dreamed of a continuous motorway, a single flowing route that would let traffic actually move. But turning that dream into reality has been painfully slow. The government has tackled the problem in chunks, building isolated sections that work beautifully on their own, but create chaos everywhere else. Take the South Road Superway, a massive 2.8 kilometer elevated road that cost hundreds of millions of dollars. It works perfectly for those 2.8 kilometers. Traffic flows smoothly, no lights, no stops, but then you hit the end and suddenly you're stuck again with thousands of vehicles back onto regular streets with traffic lights. The bottleneck just moved. Same story with the Torrens to Torrens project, which sunk a portion of road into a trench. Another smooth section that simply funneled all the traffic into the next choke point. Then there is the final 10.5 kilometer stretch, running from the River Torrens down to Darlington. This section cuts straight through Adelaide's most densely developed suburbs. We're talking about established neighborhoods, shopping districts, schools, businesses that have been there for generations. For decades, this section has been considered basically impossible to fix. Going over it would mean building massive elevated highways, casting shadows over suburban homes, Going through it would require demolishing thousands of properties, tearing communities apart. Adelaide is the only mainland state capital in Australia without a complete non-stop north-south motorway corridor, and this 10.5 kilometer gap is the reason why. But engineers have finally found a way forward. It's terrifying, it's expensive, and it requires technology that pushes the absolute limits of what's possible. They're going under. The Torrens to Darlington project, universally known as T2D, represents the single largest and most complex infrastructure undertaking in South Australian history. The plan is audacious. Create a complete underground motorway network with two parallel tunnels running beneath homes, businesses, and even rivers. The northbound tunnel will carry three lanes of traffic in one direction, the southbound tunnel three lanes in the other. Six lanes of highway speed traffic disappearing completely underground. The underground network splits into two main tunnel sections. The northern tunnel runs 2.2 kilometers, diving beneath the river Torrens and established suburbs. The southern tunnel stretches for four kilometers, boring through some of the most geologically challenging ground in Adelaide. Between these two underground sections, a 4.3 kilometer stretch of motorway will be lowered below ground level, but remain open to the sky, cutting noise pollution and keeping the highway hidden from surrounding neighborhoods. To carve these caverns through the earth, South Australia is bringing in three mechanical monsters. These tunnel boring machines, built by German engineering giant Herrenknecht, are among the most advanced construction machines ever created. 
Each TBM measures 100 meters from front to back, the exact length of a professional soccer field. They weigh thousands of tons and cost tens of millions of dollars each. The business end of these machines is the cutter head, a 15 meter diameter disc of solid steel. To put that in perspective, that's the size of a four story building. The cutter head is studded with tungsten carbide cutters, one of the hardest materials on earth, capable of grinding through rock, clay, and everything in between. The machine pushes this spinning cutter head against the tunnel face with thousands of tons of hydraulic pressure, chewing through approximately 10 meters of ground per day. The project was recently upgraded from two TBMs to three specifically to accelerate the timeline. Main construction kicks off by end of 2025, with the tunnel boring machines expected to start chewing through Adelaide's underground in late 2026. If everything goes according to plan, the entire system opens to traffic in 2031. But there's a reason this project was considered impossible for so long. Beneath Adelaide's streets lurks a geological nightmare that could derail everything. Adelaide's subsurface is a geotechnical horror show. The ground beneath the city changes dramatically every few hundred meters. In some areas, the TBMs will be grinding through soft, water-saturated sand and clay. In others, they'll hit hard bluestone and limestone that can damage even tungsten carbide cutters. This isn't just inconvenient, it's legitimately dangerous. Different ground types require different boring speeds, different cutter configurations, and constant monitoring. Then, there are the fault lines. The tunnel path crosses several dormant geological faults left over from ancient tectonic activity. While Adelaide isn't earthquake prone like California or Japan, these fault zones create zones of fractured, unstable ground. The concrete tunnel segments in these areas need special engineering, designed to be slightly more flexible than standard segments. If the ground ever shifts even slightly, these segments can flex without catastrophically cracking and flooding the tunnel. Water presents the most constant threat. Large sections of the tunnel will be dug below Adelaide's water table, meaning the excavation is essentially happening underwater. Without constant intervention, the tunnel would flood completely. Engineers have designed a massive dewatering system with pumps running 24 hours a day, seven days a week, pulling groundwater away from the construction zone. But there's a dangerous balancing act involved. Pump out too much water too quickly, and the ground level above can sink through a process called subsidence. Buildings can crack, roads can buckle, underground pipes can shatter. Hundreds of buildings along the tunnel route will have sensors installed to detect even millimeters of movement. Beneath the surface, the tunnel route must navigate a hidden maze of existing infrastructure. Adelaide has been a functioning city for over 180 years, and the underground is packed with century-old sewers, gas mains, water pipes, telecommunications cables, and the deep foundations of bridges and major buildings. One wrong move, one miscalculation, and a TBM could puncture a major sewer line or sever a gas main. The consequences would be catastrophic. To manage these risks, the project employs a sophisticated real-time monitoring system. Hundreds of sensors positioned throughout the tunnel, route track vibrations, ground movement, and structural stress. If a TBM gets too close to a historic building and vibrations spike above safe thresholds, alerts are immediately sent to operators who can adjust boring speed or even halt operations until engineers assess the situation. If the engineers can navigate these underground dangers, they'll create something Adelaide has never seen before, making it the world's most advanced underground highway. Once the tunnels are carved and lined, they will be transformed into one of the most technologically sophisticated road systems in Australia. This won't be a simple underground road. The T2D tunnels will operate as a fully managed motorway, controlled from a central command room staffed 24 hours a day to ensure safety, which is the most critical part of this whole project. Fire represents the worst case scenario in an underground environment, as deadly smoke can quickly fill enclosed spaces. The T2D tunnels combat this with multiple redundant systems. A deluge system will release thousands of liters of water per minute, essentially creating a rainfall inside the tunnel to suppress flames. The powerful jet fans mounted in the ceiling won't just circulate air, they will actively control smoke direction during a fire, pushing it away from evacuating people and toward ventilation shafts where it can be expelled to the surface. 
The ventilation system itself represents a major engineering challenge. Six lanes of vehicles traveling at highway speeds will generate enormous amounts of exhaust and heat. Without proper ventilation, carbon monoxide levels would quickly reach lethal concentrations. However, the system will use a combination of massive ventilation buildings on the surface and strategically placed shafts to continuously cycle fresh air through the tunnels while removing contaminated air. The fans will be powerful enough to completely refresh the air in both tunnels multiple times per hour. Traffic will flow through the tunnels at genuine highway speeds. No lights, no stops, just continuous movement. The six lanes, three in each direction, will finally deliver on the promise that's been dangled in front of Adelaide drivers since the 1960s. The 10.5-kilometer stretch that currently takes 30 minutes or more will be reduced to approximately eight minutes of uninterrupted driving. But this technological marvel comes with a price tag that has split Adelaide down the middle and sparked a debate that won't end until well after 2031. The final budget for T2D stands at $15.4 billion, making it not just South Australia's largest infrastructure project, but one of the most expensive road projects in Australian history. The funding is split equally between the Australian federal government and the South Australian state government, with each contributing $7.7 billion. To put this in perspective, South Australia's entire annual state budget is approximately $23 billion. This single project represents a third of an entire year's budget. But decades of inaction have cost Adelaide far more than $15.4 billion in lost productivity, missed economic opportunities, and reduced quality of life. Adelaide's growth, particularly in the northern suburbs and around the port, makes a complete north-south corridor essential for the state's economic future. So, what do you think about Adelaide's $15.4 billion underground gamble? Is this the visionary infrastructure project Australia needs or a colossal waste of taxpayer money? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this deep dive into one of the world's most ambitious engineering projects fascinating, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more incredible stories of human ambition and engineering excellence. Until next time, stay curious.